Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House of Representatives is a unique and special place. There are many political offices in America where one can get uh, office via accident or appointment, but every man and woman on this floor had to be elected by friends and neighbors to deal with the fiscal and economic health of the nation for giving voice to people's fears, aspirations, and dreams. I count every day of service in Congress as a gift. Our friend and colleague Steve Law Tourette's announcement that he would not seek re-election should give pause to every one of us. You often hear a person say they don't always agree with somebody, but they respect them. With Steve Law Tourette, that's true. Despite being in different political parties, I deeply respect and appreciate Steve's forthright opinions. His focus on having the resources to rebuild and renew America is as refreshing as it is important. He's willing to call for increases in fees and taxes for infrastructure. At the same time, he pushes for responsible budget cutting and right-sizing government in a way that's going to pinch almost everyone. His approach is courageous and consistent, and ultimately, we will follow that balanced path. He has a sense of justice and regular order, as when he took to the floor as a lonely voice arguing for due process on behalf of a disgraced former member. He does what he believes in. Another overused phrase in this body is a wake-up call. But Steve's decision and announcement should be a wake-up call, a wake-up call to the majority party to think about what this portends for their ability to govern and what will happen when the political winds shift just a little, which they surely will. It's a wake-up call for the people on my side of the aisle. As we fight against what we think are short-sighted and destructive policies, we need to do so in a way that is fair. We all should look for opportunities to make a little progress on second and third tier issues that will help do some good while we build the capacity of this institution in bipartisan problem solving. Most of all, this should be a wake-up call to the American public. Too many of us have allowed our political decisions to be outsourced as the political process increasingly is taken over by smaller and smaller groups of extreme opinion in primaries of both parties. The Tea Party activists have gotten headlines this weekend in the Texas St Senate primary, but the dynamic is known by both parties and potentially distorts the choices of candidates and of issues in the fall. Some members of Congress gain a little notoriety by virtue of vision or policy. Usually we get it by being outrageous and stark. Perhaps we're known at home and for groups that, we, that have interests that we work with. But the vast majority of us wouldn't register above margin of error on the larger stage of American national politics. Steve, despite two decades of solid, distinguished service, his wit, good humor, and effectiveness, is a number of us who may be characterized as an obscure member of Congress. Yet, I would argue, Steve La Tourette should be on the radar screen of every American. His is a powerful message of an institution that needs serious readjustment. Steve, his family, especially the younger children, will do just fine. I think he'll have a better job, spend more time with family and friends, I think he'll live longer. But make no mistake, everybody should pay attention to his story, his career, and why he's leaving. In a lifetime of solid, productive public service, if this leads to people reconsidering how we do business, how the American public assesses who they reward or punish, then our loss due to his retirement may be the most important contribution in his distinguished career.